We've all experienced pain at some point in our lives, but from headaches to childbirth, our experience of pain varies dramatically. Today, one in five adults lives with chronic pain, and for many that pain is severe and disabling. Several factors contribute to how we manage pain, many of which are out of our control. Even though pain is common, there's a prejudice that somehow it should be easy to ignore, that mind over matter is a sign of mental toughness. The opposite is true. Pain exists as a way to grab our attention. We are supposed to respond to it. Pain signals that part of our body is damaged or is under threat of damage. So it is adaptive for us to be concerned about pain, as this will ensure that we take pain seriously and look to address the problem. So why is it that some people seem able to carry on despite pain, and other people are stopped in their tracks? One reason could be that for some of us, the biological processes that signal pain have developed to be less intense due to genetic or environmental factors. Pain is about much more than what's going on in our body. But pain is not all in the mind. Chronic pain is better thought of as a nervous system disorder, which means it involves the nerves in our limbs, spine and brain. And whenever the brain is involved, then what we think and how we feel become important. Pain is also not just about what we feel. It's also about what we think and our beliefs and emotions. How we experience pain can be strongly influenced by our past experiences and psychological well-being. Pain therapies can help people deal with pain by targeting different aspects of the pain experience, including the biological, emotional and social. For chronic pain, research has shown that continuing to engage in moderate activity leads to better outcomes by helping people retain mobility and strength. In Bath, we have a team of international pain researchers and we are working to find new ways to help people live the lives they want to live, despite being in pain. Here are three things to remember. First, all pain should be taken seriously. However, the severity of pain is not always related to the amount of damage to a body part. Second, sensitivity to pain is not a sign of weakness and there is no need to feel shame or guilt if pain affects you more than other people. There are many factors that contribute to how disruptive pain is for us, many of which are out of our control. Third, there are ways that people can learn to better cope with pain, such as by engaging with new therapies and remaining physically and socially active. Thanks for watching.